Everybody, before you take a seat, let's give a really good, nice round of applause for Michael Atwood, co-founder of OSHI. Thank you, Slim. Standing ovation before I even spoke, that's, that's fun. That's great. All right, so yeah. Um, thanks for the introduction, Slim. Uh, my name's Michael, yeah, I'm one of the co-founders of OSHI, and I'm here to talk today about B-commerce. Uh, not to be confused with e-commerce. B-commerce is really about fostering grassroots Bitcoin economies in cities and communities all over the world. We have the tools to do it. We just need to know why we need to do it and how we can do it. That's, those are the two big, big questions. We can talk about it all day, but how do we actually get it started? Um, just to kick it off here, the big picture is that for thousands of years, Payments were peer-to-peer -peer using some form of cash-like instrument, right? Whether it's a shiny rock, glass beads, paper money, seashells, pick your poison. Payments were peer-to-peer. -peer. Cash is king. Settlement's instant. It's final. There's no, no chargebacks, no takesy-backsies. It's free. No one needs to process that. There's privacy guarantees. No one knows who paid what to whom. And it's inclusive. Anyone can use it. You don't need permission. That's a huge thing. And for the past 50 years, that's changed dramatically, especially over the past couple decades. Dramatically changed. It's no longer peer to peer, generally speaking. It's peer to this payment provider, that payment provider, this processor, that processor, this bank, that bank. They're all taking these fees and those fees. It's no longer peer to peer. Cash is going away. Settlement is not instant. It can take days to weeks to receive your money. It's not final. There can be chargebacks up to 90 days if you use a card. It's not private. Say goodbye to any form of privacy you once had. Um, it's just not the way, not the way it was meant to be. Again, this is, this is an anomaly. Oh, and of course, they're going to charge you to do it. That's the other thing. It's not free anymore. They're going to charge you 2, 3, 4, 5 percent for the privilege of sending a payment, swiping your card, dipping the chip, tapping your phone, whatever. Now, primarily, this was used to conduct online commerce. And really, this started kicking off in 2010 more than anything else. Um, but there was just 5% of all retail commerce was done online. That's it. There's 5%. Um, today, it's closer to 15%. During all the lockdowns, whenever small businesses were um, you know, effectively forced to come online. Maybe they weren't ready to. Maybe they didn't have a website or they didn't have the capabilities to do one, or they didn't want to pay someone to do one for them. Well, they had to now. Um, they had to have an online store. They were locked down. That little tick up there is small businesses getting crushed, and now we're kind of returning to the norm little by little. The reality, though, like I said, is that 85% of retail commerce is done in person. It's not done online. 85% is still done in person, little known fact. Even though you're using your card on Amazon, you're catching a cab with Uber, you're using your card, that's really the only way to interface online. In the payments world, the majority of payments are still done in person, right? And what's worse is that even in person, payment providers have done everything they could to get you to use those cards, to swipe those cards, to stop using cash. Now, there's a convenience aspect of it, but that's not enough to change behavior. You need rewards. You need incentives. You have to have so much more. And in 2010, which is what the start of that, that chart was, there was the introduction of someone called the points guy. And I fell for it. There's like open up 
10 credit cards, who cares? Stack the points, they're giving you free points. $300 here, whenever you spend 2,000, travel the world for free, blah, 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 we all fell for it. Everyone owns a card, majority of people swipe their card for every single transaction they make. And hate them or hate them, there's really not much to love about them. The Federal Reserve Bank of Boston actually came up with a pretty based you know, assertion here. There's a 65 page research paper they wrote that wanted to answer the question of who gains and who loses from credit card payments. Any wild guess? <laughs> yeah, I'll summarize this for you. One sentence that they had in there that's the only one worth reading. Actually, it was a pretty good report, but let's just summarize it. Thus, banks keep 65% of the revenues for merchant fees while consumers receive 35% in rewards. You're getting fleeced. You think you're getting rewards, but the, the, the businesses that are having to pay these merchant fees have already raised their prices to offset that. They're not doing it for free. Nothing's free. You're paying the fees and they're giving you a little piece of it back and rewards to keep you happy. The old Bitcoin trope, have, some, have fun staying poor. That's what we're doing. We're swiping our cards. We think we're getting rewards. It is more convenient. Or we're losing money. We're getting fleeced. The big banks are winning. The card issuers are winning. They get a piece out of every single transaction that takes place at the local level and you're the ones paying for it. Community banks provide 40% of small business lendings despite having only 13% market share. When the big banks get bigger and the small banks die off, who's going to lend to the small businesses? The top four banks control 41% of banking assets but supply just 16% of small business lending. That's a problem. They're the ones that are going to talk to you about your small business. They're going to shake your hand. They're going to see if they can help you out so, in hopes that you can provide value to your fellow men, to provide value in your community. And you're taking the risk. It's very virtuous. That same thing doesn't happen whenever they're lending major corporations millions and hundreds of millions of dollars. This is an anomaly. It's a blip in history of the payment space that every single transaction that takes place, the banks get a piece of it. It's not the way it's supposed to be. Federal taxes are bad enough. Now these corporations are effectively taxing you to send and receive money too. I'm not sure how well you guys are going to be able to see this. The Internet of Information, the Internet of Data, it's pretty ubiquitous. It took most physical things, turned it into digital. There's so much we can do online. Most people have a cell phone no matter what country you live in. They have access to the internet in one way or another. Yet most people are not really participating in e-commerce. In the United States, it's just 15% of retail sales. In countries that maybe don't have access to a bank or financial institution so that they can have the privilege of participating in any form of online commerce. It's less than 5% participation. It's because we don't have an internet of money, or at least we didn't until Bitcoin, a digitally native peer-to-peer -peer cash system. We're sending a payment online using Lightning Network it's near instant and near free. It's actually cheaper to send a payment online than it is to tap your card in store for the first time ever. It's always been more expensive to send an online payment than it is to tap your card in store. So this to me is going to usher in B-commerce. A B-commerce revolution where the 85% of those who don't actively participate in it, being businesses or consumers, can for the first time begin to step into it, right? And they can begin to give a uh, little competition to all the major corporations. 
E-commerce is dominated by the major corporations. Top four companies account for 65% of all online commerce transactions. Lightning fixes this. Lightning Network, and this is a really basic definition here, think of it almost like the Visa or MasterCard of Bitcoin. All right, you can now send, well, except it's far better. Settlement is instant, it's final, there's no chargebacks, it's near free to send a transaction. Anyone, anywhere in the world can use it. You don't have to have permission to use it. It doesn't matter if you're in the United States with a bank account or you're in El Salvador and could never dream of having a bank account, you can use this network. And generally speaking, it's far more private than any debit or credit card will ever be. So that's the why. That's the beginnings of the why. We need to take these banks and financial institutions out of our local economy like they have been for thousands of years. A reversion to the norm. So how do you pay with it? And I know there's a totally, you know, um, a rather robust crowd here today. Diverse crowd. How many people have sent or received a Bitcoin transaction before? All right, most people. So the people that have not, look around to those people, maybe raise your hands again. Look around, you're gonna to need to find them in a minute. All right, because they're gonna help you. <laughs> so there's a variety of different ways you can send and receive Bitcoin payments. Um, a great one is called Moon Wallet. Some of them are easier than others. Some of them are more private than others. Some of them are more self-sovereign than others. But Moon Wallet's a great one. You effectively scan an invoice. This is a Bitcoin invoice. You confirm it, you send it, it's sent. It's really not much more difficult than that, generally speaking. And there's other wallets too. Let's say, well, I don't want to spend my Bitcoin. Bitcoin's the greatest monetary asset of all time. It is. I don't want to spend it. Why would I do that? That's stupid, right? Okay, well, there are ways in which you can participate in the Bitcoin economy. You can use Lightning Network with dollars from your bank account. If you are so inclined, at the very least, you're helping the merchant save in fees. As a consumer, you have a little more privacy, somewhat, uh, at least in terms of whenever you're sending to a merchant. Strike knows what you're sending but the merchant doesn't necessarily know who it came from. So that's another option. And then there's the more like self-sovereign option. There's Zeus, where you can connect it to your own node, your own computer, running your own Bitcoin software. You don't need anyone to do it for you. You can do it in a more self-sovereign way, the, the shadowy super coder way that Elizabeth Warren talks about. That's possible. All that's possible. You have the super easy way, you have maybe the intermediate way, you have the custodial way, you have the KYC way, you have the non-KYC way. Choose whatever is best for you, whatever you're capable of. So now we know how to spend it. And at a basic level, we know how to receive it. But what about if you're a business? How do I accept it? What's the best way to accept it? Ibex is my favorite. Um, awesome company. They make it so easy to accept Bitcoin payments, uh, Lightning payments, um, actually Lightning payments. It's still Bitcoin for those you know, who, who, are, who are a little confused by that. Um, let's say you're a business owner and you go, you know, look, I, I'm down to like get the lower processing fees and I'm down to open up my business to being able to accept Bitcoin. Maybe I'll get, um, you know, customers excited to come and pay with Bitcoin. Maybe I'll differentiate myself from other businesses. Maybe I'll be able to market and promote myself for e-commerce in a way that I haven't really been able to do before. But I don't want Bitcoin. Damn it. Let's just say that's you. That's fine. Or let's just say you have a business to run. You can't keep all your profits in Bitcoin. Let's say you have a substantial amount of, of income coming in Bitcoin. You need a little bit of cash to pay you know, your suppliers that aren't accepting Bitcoin yet. That little slider there that you see, you can take that slider, 
you can determine what allocation is settled on your end, even if a customer pays with Bitcoin. If you want 1% Bitcoin and 99% dollars, go for it. No problem. You can do that. You can send those dollars straight to your bank account. You can leverage Bitcoin network without necessarily holding on to the asset or as much as the asset as you want. That's fine. Baby steps. You'll be holding on a lot more in the future. So, all right. I want... I would like everybody to scan this. So what this is, if hopefully, I know there's a glare. So what this is, I have my IBEX pay business, okay? How do I get my employees to accept this? How do I get them to accept Bitcoin on my behalf without like giving them my Bitcoin wallet? This is a great way. So whenever you scan this, you're going to go to a web URL. This is my store. You, you are now my employees. All right, so you can turn to the person to your left or to your right. You can generate an invoice right now. I, I, would, I would love for you to do it. Just experience it. Generate an invoice for like two pennies or something, whatever you want. Um, thank you for your donation. Uh, I'll, I'll donate it to someone. Or something, but go ahead and generate an invoice and have like somebody send like two pennies. It's like, please, if you, go for it, guys. Like, I'm going to turn the mic off for a second. I'll, I'll walk around and pay something. So whoever, if anybody has like a Bitcoin Lightning wallet and can help someone, please do. There were a lot of people raising their hands earlier. I hope they can help someone out. Yeah, so if, I just want somebody, so did you just pay someone? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, so you, okay, so here's what, yeah, here's what I want you guys to do. We were talking about this earlier. It's a little confusing. What you're able to do whenever you scan that QR code, you're able to generate an invoice, and I want you to turn to your customer, to your left or to your right, and have them pay two pennies or something from their own Lightning wallet, just so you can experience what that's like, how the payment works, how it goes through. I mean, you can pay it yourself if you want. But you can, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. On my Strike app, let me show you. So I open up my Strike app, and if I want to pay, I'm paying in fiat. But if I hit Bitcoin, I've got Bitcoin. I hit, I hit this. Now I'm gonna scan. That's Strike. Yeah, the strike is in. It. Yeah, that's this is the application. So now you're you're actually gonna have to send it from. The, yeah, so you go here. So you just go pay. Yeah, so that's how you would send a lightning. That's okay, but that's normally how it would work with Strike? Yeah. That's right. You're, you're basically my employees. Yeah, so you guys actually, you guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Exactly. Yeah. So basically, you can set up your own IBEX account as a merchant, and you can share one of these links with any of your employees, and they can now accept Bitcoin on your behalf. Or just you yourself. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's that? I'm checking. Like, 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 am I getting a, like, will you recognize that Blake brought in those three cents, or you just, you just got some money? Yeah, yeah, no, I just received, like, three cents, and I don't know who it came from, or I don't know which employee necessarily uh, did it, yeah, yeah. So, was, yeah, sorry for the confusion there, guys. Parker and I were talking about this. He was so right. <laughs> he did it. He paid in Bitcoin. Cool. Awesome. So you just accepted a Bitcoin payment, sir. Just like that, it's that easy. All right, so we'll move on here. So here's another platform, it's called OpenNode, another great platform. Um, what they really shine in is if you have a Shopify store or WooCommerce or any sort of e-commerce store, they have a bunch of different plugins uh, with which you can easily incorporate Bitcoin into your online store. So at checkout, somebody can go, yeah, I want to pay with Bitcoin. They can pay with Bitcoin on-chain, or they can use Lightning um, as well. 
They can do whatever they want. And then again, for the shadowy supercoders, there's something called BDC Pay Server. You can run your own server. You can run your own node. They don't charge you any commissions on anything. There are some, some fees that are associated with actually setting up your own channels and doing all this stuff. We're not going to get into that. But just know, the point of this is to know that you can do it all on your own. You don't need to rely on any other company to do this for you. This company in particular is open source. You can, you can audit the code um, or, or just trust that a lot of other people who are shadowy supercoders have. Um, and if you don't want to do that, you can use Voltage. So Voltage is a service that can easily spin up your BDC Pay server. You can still maintain custody of your own, of your own keys, um, but they'll at least host it for you. So you can accept Bitcoin, KYC free. It's great. So now we're accepting Bitcoin. We've set up ourselves with IBEX or OpenNode or BDC Pay, or we have a wallet where we're accepting Bitcoin. Maybe we're using Strike because we just want dollars, what have you. What about invoicing? Do you want to like actually send a nice invoice to one of your clients? What are you going to do? ZapRite is a great tool for that. You can create an invoice, and then you can monitor when that invoice has been paid. So if you're a freelancer, or like I said, a wholesaler or whatever, download ZapRite, or actually just use the web app, go on to ZapRite.com, set it up, connect your payment provider, or insert your Bitcoin address, and whenever somebody pays you, that's where it's going to go. So you create an invoice, you send it to the customer, the customer will see this, Whenever they want to pay it, they can pay it on their own time. They'll receive a link. And then whenever they do pay it, you will receive confirmation in your email that it's been paid. It's a tool for you and your business. And now you have the Bitcoin. You're receiving Bitcoin. What do you do with it? How do you hold it safely, securely? Unchained Capital is a wonderful way to do that. You can also leverage their platform and their different financial services to, to use your Bitcoin. They have collaborative custody models. I'm not going to go into too much on this because Parker's going to come up next, and he knows it a lot better than I do. All right, so now what? We accept Bitcoin as a business. We can invoice our clients. We can send Bitcoin. We know how. But who knows that we accept it? Like, how do we get that out there? How are we discoverable? And that's where my project comes in. Our goal is to empower local economies through Bitcoin. We're trying to use the same tactic that the payment processors and card issuers used in the early 2000s in a different way. We have to provide the incentives for people to part way with their Bitcoin because if they don't have the incentive paired with the experience, it's not going to change. You have to have both. Who's going to go out of their way and pay Bitcoin invoices unless you're an ideologue or unless you just enjoy it for the novelty and the experience of it. How do we transition people to think differently? And furthermore, how do we promote businesses so that people are aware that they're accepting Bitcoin? How do we incentivize consumers to actually jump over that hurdle to want to pay with Bitcoin? And really, the experience is, is generally getting pretty good. There's a lot of different tools. It's a lot better than those credit card knuckle busters. We had to like, you know, I don't even, <laughs> you had to like scan them and imprint them onto the paper. We've come a long way since then. So with Oshi, you as a business owner can connect with any payment processor you use that we currently support. We, we generally support almost all of them and we'll be supporting as many as we possibly can. Um, or, or at least all the ones worth using at this moment. Um, 
And we provide businesses with a marketplace so consumers can discover your business. And as a business, you can offer different rewards and incentives for consumers to come to your business. You don't have to rely on Visa and MasterCard to determine what percent they're going to give your customers back. And because you've never had access to that before, you don't necessarily have to use square stars or coffee punch cards or all these things that generally people don't care about. You can reward your customers with Bitcoin. It's a reward system for the people. And it's also just a tool to show your community the value of Bitcoin. Because it's not just about talking about it, you have to show people. It could be a conversation starter. Have you heard about this? Oh, you can accept Bitcoin. It's really easy. You can reward your customers in Bitcoin. You can have Bitcoin loyalty. You can sell loyalty cards, gift cards from your Square POS. You can take your first steps into a Bitcoin economy. You can help to empower your local economy. You can kick out the payment processors. And if you go and you refer people to the app, then you'll receive a commission off that. Instead of going to the banks, we give it back to you. This is a, a quote from a business owner in Miami. Awesome dude. John Burnett. He says, I bought Bitcoin to protect my family. We added Bitcoin to our balance sheet to protect our business and employees. Let's start the Bitcoin circular economy to protect us all. And if you don't fully comprehend what that means yet, Parker's going to come up here in a moment and he's going to describe a little more about what Bitcoin really is. That's a powerful statement. But you can have some of the most passionate people in the world, but without the incentives and the experience, it's going to be difficult to adopt something like this. But people like him are going out in his community and he's starting to talk with business owners about accepting Bitcoin. And because he runs a successful business, people listen. Uh, a few weeks ago, we went into a place and just him and I got 10 different businesses to at least verbally commit to accept Bitcoin. You just have to start the conversation. I think people would be really surprised how open to it people are now. But if you don't have anything to start the conversation, if you don't have the knowledge on where to send these businesses or how to get started on your own as a business, it just kind of falls on deaf ears. So that pretty much wraps it up for me. I hope that, uh, you know, people learn something here today, the different tools, the why, the how, and that you can go out into your own community and kind of get this flywheel going, get the Bitcoin circular economy started, and really raise the Bitcoin barns, one community at a time from the bottom up, not the top down. It's not going to happen from the top down, not the way we want it to. All right. I can answer any questions you guys have. Yeah, so primarily um, like restaurants, so coffee shops, conference tickets, things where we can give them basically like a proof of purchase and they can go into the store and, and redeem it. Um, but really there's, there's no business that we can't necessarily service. Um, where it gets tricky is if the business actually invoices like specific, like a roofing company, like isn't really gonna be able to, they can promote on our app and say, hey, like we have a 10% pay with Bitcoin discount. Or, you know, they can do that, and we're more than happy to do that. But in terms of, like, actually the transactions on the app itself, it would have to be more, like, uh, consumables or services in which you can, like, redeem in person later. So we're giving businesses the opportunity to promote themselves and sell their goods and services online in a way that they haven't necessarily been able to do very effectively or efficiently. It's always been more expensive. Or the third parties that you use, say, as a restaurant, you want to use DoorDash, yeah, they'll charge you like somewhere between you know, 15 to 30 percent. That's not feasible, <laughs> you know? Like, that's pretty, that's pretty tough to, to make any money whenever you're getting charged a 30 percent commission. 
Um, and then furthermore, like in terms of the incentives, I mean, if you're a business willing to hold on to that Bitcoin and you believe that the price of Bitcoin is going to increase at least 10 percent in the next 6 to 12 to 18 months, however long you decide to hold it for, hopefully forever, that's a free discount. Leverage the, the increase in value of the asset over time or the increase in purchasing power over time to incentivize consumers to actually pay with Bitcoin. Um, and that's something that Visa and MasterCard never had. And that's why I think this, in general, the whole idea of Bitcoin rewards um, from the bottom up is, is a rather profound way to do this. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, for, the, for sure, like an on-chain payment, um, there are some websites, I think, that already, that already sell like fan, more high luxury items or homes yeah. for Bitcoin, stuff like that is like a marketplace. Um, You're cutting yeah. off at a certain level, though, right? Your, your model is, yeah. caps out at what kind of... We're focused on small businesses now. It's really a bottom-up thing for us. Uh, there's a lot of different rewards programs that are focused on, um, you know, yeah, you, if you buy gift cards, you'll receive Bitcoin rewards. Uh, but the gift cards come from major payment providers. They don't necessarily need any, any help. Um, or sorry, ma major corporations. Um, and then those major corporations are already working out deals with the payment processors anyway. Um, but that's an easy way to like really enter into the market and provide incentives. Those companies are great. They're good friends of mine, some of them. So, um, but I just, I, I really, the approach I take is a bottom up approach. Uh, we need to get it into the hands of the people who need it most. And if we can distribute this as much as we can, then, um, you know, I, I, I'd like the, the federal government to start telling like millions and millions of small business owners who are benefiting from accepting Bitcoin and holding Bitcoin. Oh no, you can't do that anymore because of terrorists and because of this, yeah, good luck. Like, but if you tell Amazon, yeah, they'll probably just keel over and, and do whatever the government says. So it's, bottom up is the best way. Absolutely, yeah. How long does that with, with IBAC, like we could set you up with a payment processor in five minutes. It takes five minutes. It takes no time. Um, it just depends on what you're using for your website. You had mentioned you're using Stripe. Uh, we, have a, we have a novel way to connect to that as well, where you're actually receiving the Bitcoin, but the customers can still go through the normal flow with the shipping and go to your website and select your product, um, having already paid for it in Oshi. So... Um, they'd basically just receive a 100% discount at checkout for that item because you already received the Bitcoin and your own personal Bitcoin account the moment they paid for that. From there, it's just a matter of getting their shipping information and sending it to them, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, like, I'm, and I'm not even, like, anti-corporate, right? And I'm sure a lot of people aren't. Like, it's more pro-small business, right? Like, it's about, a, it's about a more equitable playing field. Like, there's never going to be equality, right? It's a, it's a, but equity is different. You can have a more equitable playing field in which everyone kind of plays by the same rules. Um, and, and Lightning is definitely, I think, going to usher in that change. I think there is going to be a Bitcoin renaissance for small businesses. I think it's going to be powered effectively by B-commerce. Um, I think it's going to give them access, not just in the United States, but we're talking like small mom and pop shops in El Salvador that have never dreamed about accepting digital payments, could never dream about putting their products on some website. They didn't have access to that. They do now for the first time ever, ever. And, and the market there, we're talking like 96% of commerce is done in store like with cash, that's pretty profound. And it might even start 
there, really. I mean, in El Salvador already, but yeah. Yes. Uh, so he was asking, like, what the friction point was on getting businesses set up and the ones that said no, you know, what, what was their issue, right? And generally, it's the POS. And it's at the POS level. They're like, well, how does it integrate into Square or to Toast or to this or to that? Um, because they have inventory to account for. And then from there, it's like the employees. So we do have a Square integration, so you can redeem something that you purchase on Oshi at the Square POS. Um, we're still kind of working on making that more seamless. Let's say for now, it's kind of like the, the knuckle buster for the credit card. Yeah, you gotta like do this thing and maybe it'll, it's annoying, but over time it gets better and better. Well, is it possible that there's also a friction point of, is this going to collide with my already predisposed way that I do my account? Right, yeah, there's a, there's a, right now I actually get them set up with their own payment provider, payment process to their own like Bitcoin account. So it's all separated. Um, so if we can get them to basically ring up the order as normal in the POS, they'll receive the, like, the, the revenue for accounting on that, but the Bitcoin is actually going into a separate account, so it's totally separated. Um, and if they choose to hold that Bitcoin, which actually most businesses do, they go, well, what percentage of my sales are actually gonna be in Bitcoin right now? 1%, 2%, less? Who cares, we'll hold it. So they'll hold it, they're not gonna sell it, so they're not gonna incur any capital gains, capital losses, it just gets counted as revenue, which in, in which case is kind of like accounted for on their POS system, whenever you walk in, oh, I want this, okay, here you go, oh, I bought it, cool. You know, so, no. Most effective strategy to onboard small business owners? Uh, I, I come at it from like all over the place sometimes. Sometimes I just go from like the rewards angle. Hey, do you want to bring in more customers? The Bitcoin cryptocurrency space is growing. Um, it's going to keep growing. It's not going away. There are people that are willing to pay with Bitcoin. If you let them, you're going to get new customers you may not have otherwise had. You're going to be able to keep them coming back with rewards and incentives, loyalty. Um, but sometimes I just walk up and I'm like, hey, you guys ever thought about accepting Bitcoin? Ha ha. And it just like starts the conversation. I, I generally, I don't get anybody that's like, yo, get lost. Everyone's always like, well, yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about it. I've never thought about it. Or some people are like, yeah, I've actually been wanting to do this. They just had no idea how. So that's where the how comes in. We have to show people how. We have to start the conversation. And I think people in this room would be really surprised if you just Start the conversation at the coffee shop with the barista. If you happen to catch the owner, great. If you don't, just start talking about it and see what happens. I think you would be pleasantly surprised. I don't know how I am on time here. We're good? Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? Right. Correct. Yeah, so it's called IBEX. Um, it's, uh, it's my go-to. It's called IBEX. So it's a Bitcoin payment provider. Um, you can sign up with them in five minutes. You can start accepting Bitcoin. But if you choose to link your bank account and do your business verification, you could, there's a little slider so that every Bitcoin transaction you receive, you can choose to automatically, instantaneously, without any additional taxable implications, convert a portion of that to dollars. So you can receive Bitcoin, but convert 100% of it to dollars if you'd like, without any additional tax headaches or anything like that. The dollars could go straight to your linked bank account. Uh, it's just communicating over the ACH network. So you link your bank, and then they'll just send an ACH transfer uh, to to your bank. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Nothing, nothing. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, you, you got to pay. You got to pay bills with dollars for now, right? So, so I've actually found. So she was asking, like, do most people look at that the slider and like that's the thing that pushes them over the edge? Like, okay, I'll do this. Actually, most people, I feel like that's just a piggy, an add-on, where they go. Sometimes people are on the fence. If they're on the fence, I can typically like show them that feature and they're like, oh, okay, so I can do it. And then actually, in my experience, once they just know that that's kind of like a backstop, just in case, like they're not totally sold on this thing, they don't really know, but they have that as a backstop. Um, it's Sometimes they say, you know, I'll just keep the Bitcoin for now. But they know that if they need to at any point, they can kind of finish that setup process and they can convert it to dollars. So I, I found that most businesses are actually just generally okay with just holding on to the Bitcoin, especially it's just a small percentage of the sales. Yeah. All righty. All right, well, thanks, guys. Oh, you got a question? <laughs> just Bitcoin. Yeah, just Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is generally, especially with Lightning Network, is really the only thing that makes it truly feasible to accept like online payments because it's instant and the processing fees are near zero and really the infrastructure built around it is robust enough to like accommodate it. Um, all the others don't really quite have that yet or if ever and Bitcoin is the only thing that I'm comfortable introducing to really anyone. Yeah, yeah. Thanks everyone.